The theory of everything is what drives hundreds of physicists around the world. And it could be the crowning achievement of 2,000 years of our investigation into the nature of matter. We want an equation, one inch long, that will allow us to, quote, read the mind of God. We want an equation that will summarize everything we know about the universe. Gravity, light, the electromagnetic force, the nuclear force. We want all of it into a single equation, which will give us not just the Big Bang, the formation of planets and galaxies, but even the formation of people, maybe even love. All of it in a theory that eluded Einstein for the last 30 years of his life. And today, we think we have it. We do. Yeah. Why do we think that? Because we have a theory called string theory. It is fantastic. It is incredible. It has astounded the world of mathematics and physics. And now you can't move in the physics world without bumping into somebody who wants to talk about the 10th dimension, the 11th dimension, the multiverse, hyperspace, time travel. All the things that were once considered science fiction are now centerpiece in our understanding of the nature of everything. You called it a theory, however. It's a theory because we are going to test it with the Large Hadron Collider. You know that Big Bang machine outside Geneva, Switzerland, that some people think is going to tear the world apart? Wrong. It's a machine of science. And we hope to create a mini Big Bang by slamming protons together near the speed of light, recreate a teeny weeny bit of genesis, and from that, extract information that will show us that perhaps string theory really is the theory of everything. And that's what I do for a living. That's my day job. What where did string theory come from, and, and who's the founder of it? You're not going to believe this. In science, we always say that you make observations, you have a theory, you go make more observations, and it's a very, very tedious process. Wrong. Nobody that I know of in my field un uh, uses the so-called scientific method. In our field, it's by the seat of your pants. It's leaps of logic. It's guesswork. And in 1968, string theory was found by accident. Two postdocs, uh, Veneciano and Suzuki, were looking through a math book, a math book, and came up with the beta function, which seemed to describe the collision of pi mesons. Why should a math book describe the intricacies of the collision of subatomic particles? Years later, we found out that it was a vibrating string that made all these things possible. What I did was, me and my colleague, created a field theory of strings. What I did was I created an equation one inch long that will allow us to summarize all of string theory, all the equations of string theory. Now it's this huge, gigantic theory, hundreds of people working on it, and we hope to describe the results from the Large Hadron Collider outside Geneva, Switzerland, a $10 billion machine dedicated to unraveling the secret of nature itself. What is that formula? Well, everybody knows E equals mc squared. That equation is one inch long, and that's the secret of the stars. Uh, matter, energy, they convert into each other. And that's why the stars shine at night. That's why we have the energy that lights up the universe. But Einstein was not satisfied with the theory of just energy. He wanted a theory of everything. Gravity, the electromagnetic force, all the forces wrapped up into a single equation. And then some people ask me, well, so what? I mean, can you get better color television this way? Can you get better cable reception? And the answer is, in some sense, yes. It is a theory of everything. When Newton unraveled the force of gravity, that gave us a mechanics, which gave us the Industrial Revolution. So the Industrial Revolution, in part, was set off by the discovery of the laws of gravity. Then Edison, Maxwell, Faraday worked out the laws of electricity and magnetism. And that gave, uh, gave us lasers and computers and the electric age. And then Einstein and others helped to work out the nuclear force, which lights up the stars. Now, we want a theory of everything, a theory of all forces. We want to create a super force. And what did this super force create? The universe itself. 